Hello chat. Today is March 10th and today my milk goes bad so I need to drink it. It's Tuesday. I don't even have any milk. I was uh, gonna have cereal as a snack. You're not going to now. But instead I'm drinking from this lovely delicious teaching sand to think was a mistake coffee mug. Which mm. you can buy at store.level1text.com. This episode is also brought to you by Linode. Uh, there's never been a better time to try Linode. They've got a new promo going on, and there's a link for that below. It's linode.com slash level1text. The promo is free static object storage. So this is a new service that Linode is offering. What's static object storage? It's like Amazon's S3, you know, like the S3 buckets that we're always struggling with or struggling with other people's lack of permissions or reporting permissions issues. Linode Just has that service. In and so you can host static files on it. You can also use secure S3 buckets for backups. So you can create an encrypted backup stored in an S3 bucket so that only you have the key to it. So it's not public or anything like that. So if you need to store a big file or a little file or static files or movies or music or media or whatever, that will be hosted on Linode's content delivery network. You don't need a server for it. You don't need anything like that. Um, there are some static site tutorials that uh, uh, Linode has for using static storage, but it's completely free if you already have a Linode account. It's completely free until March 31st, 2020, so you can try it, see how it goes. So that's pretty awesome. And if you use the link, you'll actually get a $20 credit on your new Linode account. But if you, even if you have an old Linode account, you automatically have the free um, you know, object storage functionality. So that is a new feature. You should definitely check it out and try it. If for no other reason, then it will look good for you to have tried the static storage thing on your Leno account because it's like, hey, the level one connection. What are you still doing here? Go do it now. You really should because it's pretty awesome. It's actually cheaper. Like S3 is one of the cheapest things that Amazon has and Linode's option is less expensive than Amazon S3 and I'm trying it right now to actually make sure that it's better. But so far I've been really impressed because S3 is very kind of expensive for what it is. It's very expensive. Amazon, clients do not like that. Well, no, I mean, a lot of the clients are like, yeah, let's use Amazon and we'll just pay for what we use. And they just, they literally do not understand like that they are just being robbed. Like they're going to run all of their infrastructure. Amazon is great for scaling. You can scale up and down. You can do the reserved instances, but they just do not understand that they're being robbed if once they're spending more than like $400 a month on, on Amazon infrastructure. It's just, they don't understand. But you do. You will as soon as you play with your Linode account. Thanks, Linode. Thank you. All right, our first story is about the Earn It Act, which is also called We're Old and Evil and Have No Idea What We're Doing Act, because well, that's what it is. That's kind of vibe I got reading this article. It was, it's like, we're old and we don't really understand. Listen, we need back doors. We need to be able to uh, examine any citizen with a microscope at any point with probable cause, but we see how paper thin that is. This is just... Well, they talk a lot about like, oh, you know, we're trying to get rid of child pornography, which is... Uh, oh. Like, that's that's a fair thing to try and like want to get rid of, but like, you can't just... Well, we could just also murder the entire population. If, yeah, if that we, would also get rid of the problem. If we completely exterminate the human race and make the Earth's atmosphere completely uninhabitable, that would also completely end child pornography. Maybe we'd be better off for that. Mm, delicious coffee. Now, of course, those things are ridiculous, but these people would make secure computing impossible. And uh, I think that is a much worse and more bleak future than what they're describing. And uh, to understand that, you have to be, you know, at least somewhat well versed in computer science. And uh, this is terrible. Didn't they mention that, idea. like, the, the council of people who are on this are like, none of them have to be like, in the security sector at all like yeah yeah it's like, like there's nothing no provisions to be like make sure these people are qualified for this job it would be like going to your local pub and just shouting into the pubs like hey would everybody like to have a solid gold bathtub and it's like yes this is the council of solid gold bathtub it's like the, the council has decided that everyone should have a solid gold bathtub and it's like what about the logistics of that and what if it's on a second floor and it's too heavy? Are, aren't we going to have to like mine the asteroids to get that much gold because there's not that much gold on planet earth uh, and they're just like, no, we're the council of solid gold bathtubs. We need this. I just, I, the it's mind a, reels. It's a weird article. I kind of read it and it was like, is this just someone trying to get a job for their nephew? <laughs> like, 
Is this what this is? There's also a little bit of an outage. So if you use Yes Bank in India, uh, you might have had a problem uh, last week. India's Yes Bank breakdown disrupts Walmart's phone PE, among a dozen other services. This is in TechCrunch. So I guess the National Bank had to step in and deal with this or something? I, I didn't understand like the full context. Like I read the full thing and I was like, I don't... Yeah, it's like, I, I think it's back up now. Phone PE has resolved the issue. Co-founder and CTO tweeted, exhausted but exhilarated that we are back fully. After a grueling 24 hours, the UPI is fully restored to Phone PE. So this is, you know, like an electronic uh, merchant service, payment service. I'm assuming something like Venmo, maybe? Yeah, hugely yeah. popular. In, in, in countries like India, it's a lot more popular than it is here. So this kind of an outage can be crippling. It's like, I need, we need to go buy some more milk and... We can't do that, or like I need to go pay my rent. Yeah, it's like cash. Who even carries that anymore? Well, well and apparently that that service they said that like you know we had built in all these safeguards for like ten or dif ten different scenarios and blah blah blah, and then it was like we just didn't expect the bank itself <laughs> to be the problem, and the government would be taking over it and like shutting stuff down. Yeah, yeah. So I I guess that uh, it's uh, they're a victim of their own success, but not really their own fault. Just like the banking yeah. system. It's interesting. Uh, another TechCrunch article. The judge, a judge has rejected Tulsi Gabbard's free speech lawsuit against Google. So this is a little bit like last week where we had the story, um, it was something about, it was all free speech on YouTube. So it's like, uh, Traver you or something. They were trying to say that, you know, no Google, it's basically a first amendment thing. And there is actually some case law in the U S cause there was a public mall thing. I had no idea about this, but, uh, somebody posted and I read it. So, uh, there is like, you have a right to the first amendment inside a public mall, even though it's completely uh, privately owned. Yeah. Because, but it's the, more of a public space because lots of different yeah. merchants are there. Like, and so what would define a public space in the context of a website? Oh, that's actually a good question because so, they do sort of have monopolies on you well, know, search. And I don't know. It's pretty easy to set up your own website and make it reachable, though. Like, you know, you could just yeah. use Linode. Uh, but, uh. but if Google doesn't list it, though, so it's like, say you look up, you know, candidates, and then, like <laughs> she's not listed at all. So uh, you, when you get demonetized for Corona Chan, that, that might be a, it's like, well, you can kind of use this, but not really. It's like, eh. I didn't check where we demonetized last week for all the, the one of them stories. was okay. I figured. <laughs> but. Speaking of Corona Chan, Iran's answer to that is to cut the internet. So yeah, this is basically the same story as last week where, yeah, this is confirmed. There is a major problem there, uh, for, uh, you know, health. And they're just like, Nope, just turn it off. Turn just it off. Gone. Um, well, apparently one of the, the people was saying, I can't remember which one of the like officials it was, but said that like, there have been 50 deaths in my town alone. And I think their official death number was like 30 at the time. <laughs> so it was like, I don't. Uh, yeah, things are not going so great here in the US. Turns out the, the people, the people in charge that know what they're doing might not have the power necessary to take action to solve it. Did it's you like, see Corona's here? Yeah. It's in Lexington. Yeah. The uh, governor issued a statement on Friday. Well, it's not really technically here. Someone was sent here to die, basically, to be near family. So. And then they had it. Yeah. yeah. So Great. It's, it's like, yeah. It probably is already here and we just don't know because like no one's showing symptoms <laughs> or anything yet. Oh dear. Uh, speaking of uh, plagues, let's talk about locusts. <laughs> Scientists turned to tech to prevent second wave of locusts in East Africa. Researchers are using supercomputing to predict potential breeding areas as food security fears grow. That so. picture gives me nightmares when <laughs> I looked at this. I was like, no. They're eating everything. They really are. Like, that's horrible. That's, uh, that's not really as bad as like the years where cicadas are bad around here. Oh, yeah. I don't like cicadas either. <laughs> Their little shells get all over everything. <laughs> I have a very vivid memory of like being on a tire swing at my cousin's house and like I went to push myself off the tree and it was just like dead cicada shells and it was like, <laughs> oh, the worst. <laughs> but yeah, they're using computers to find where they're breeding in places that humans might not look. Isn't that neat? Speaking of using computers, uh, which is the entire show, exclusive live facial recognition is coming to U.S. police body cameras. Look I didn't that. see this one. Oh, yeah. That looks... He's got an why outstanding is, why warrant. Why is his face so flat? Missing person. Oh. Wanted for felony something or other. But also, it's like, it seems to be like, they're just minus 13, minus 21. And it's like, seems to be assigning gender. Is that, really? I was thinking that, like, is that a social score? Like. Yeah, that, no, no. Well, uh, is it? Is, uh, I, who knows? But, uh. What does yeah. that number mean? The software is literally assuming gender. That's, uh. 
That's horrifying. What a dark time. Speaking of dark times, France. So we talked about Uber in California, how Uber drivers are employees, and a lot of other countries have sort of picked that up. Well, it's also now official in France. Uber driver's self-employed status is fictitious, France has ruled. So Uber is going to have to uh, give them the benefits like as if they were full-time Health employees. Health insurance, actual pay. Everything is according, well, it's according to whatever France's rules are. So there's a labor board and I think it's more to do with insurance, but there are some benefits and things like that that they'll have to have. I so. imagine like sick days and that kind of thing you would get. Yeah, paid, paid time off. Yeah, vacation time, yeah. Uh, the BBC reports that coronavirus... Oh, I said it. Damn it. I uh, already said it like five seconds into the uh, news. So oh. We've already ruined it. Chinese app WeChat has been censoring that content since January 1. So China's most popular messaging app has been censoring keywords about the outbreak from as early as January 1. Is anyone surprised by that? <sighs> I feel like every government's probably censoring it to some extent. What sort of like just terrible government was just going to like... Take the, the official communication, and then like you have chat applications, and it's just going to be that's a, what a terrible just. Only the Chinese government would do something so terrible, right? <laughs> Certainly not ours. Oh no! The <laughs> CDC here in the U.S. has dropped coronavirus testing numbers from their website. Oh. I did oh. notice this the other day, so I I had checked the website because I wanted <laughs> to be informed, and I noticed that it did show what states had outbreaks, but there weren't numbers included anymore. There was a, I don't know how, how to believe it, but there was a great thread on Twitter and they, the U.S. Nurses Union read it and they had a, a nurse that apparently has contracted coronavirus and the CDC was giving her the runaround about getting tested. So it was like, well, just go to the ER. And so she called the ER and the ER is like, no, oh, the CDC I has to. I saw that too. Yeah, I also wondered just, about it. What a disaster. This is Apparently there's no way to get tested. I kind of, on one hand, like. That's stupid. On the other, though, it's like I sort of understand it if they have limited testing kits where it's like we can't test everyone who comes in here with a cough. Yeah, but why do we have limited testing kits? I mean, is yeah, it because it's a new virus and it takes a while to like manufacture that stuff, especially when everything we manufacture is in China where South, the outbreak is. South Korea seems to be doing OK in terms of manufacturing testing kits. That's true. <laughs> I actually don't know how they test for it. It might actually be a really simple like lab procedure. If but. only we had some sort of centralized bureaucracy that was concerned for the general health of the population. Hmm. that could be on top of such things and it wasn't just you know like partisan hackery i don't think that would ever happen <laughs> uh india has lifted its ban on cryptocurrency trading so i don't know india has this love hate relationship if you if you were in if you're in india and they banned cryptocurrency trading and then you had to report it and then you had to liquidate and then they allowed it again and now they allow oh, trading I yeah i mean just how how infuriating is that in, engagement challenge because do we have any viewers in India? Yes, we do have we a really? lot. I'm surprised by yeah. that. Yeah, the uh, I haven't checked our analytics in a while. I should do that. India is it's really cool because there's a lot of smart people there, but it's developing rapidly. So there's some some sort of gaps in their development. Well, it's like here, you know what I mean? We're like the infrastructure <laughs> like is terrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no infrastructure, so. <laughs> Uh, we always like to have stories on Huawei, so we've got even more follow-up on Huawei. Newly obtained documents show Huawei's role in shipping prohibited U.S. gear to Iran. So, looking over this, it doesn't seem like Huawei was being deliberately dishonest. It was more like... Um, Massaging the truth? It, no, like it was like the U.S. has bans on dealing with Iran and so we talked to some other people and they said the way to get around this is to have our supplier supply some other company that would then supply Iran because then it's out of our hands and this is the way that you do that and it just seems like it's written like from a point of view of like because you know how you read about some of the things in China and it's not exactly corrupt but you have to grease certain palms it's like oh that's prohibited and it's like well how do you function as a society and it's like well it's not really prohibited you just have to bribe to the appropriate all, person yeah. And so it reads like that. It's, it's like, an unspoken rule set. Yeah, like. yeah, it was like, okay, this isn't allowed, but you have to just pay extra and do this thing and then jump through this hoop and then do it. It's like, okay, great. I don't think that they really understood. It's like, no, we really don't want you to do that. Maybe. Maybe it's like, a, yeah, maybe it's like a cultural thing where it's like. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're not supposed to eat endangered species. And it's like, yeah, but he's a super rich person. So it's and, fine. And, you know, it's a super rich person, so he can eat endangered species, right? Because that's how it is at home. And it's like, no, no, we that's don't. That's not how that works. <laughs> no. Trying to conserve the environment. There's some cultural differences there. This is a cultural misunderstanding. Although, you know. Do you think that, 
I can't imagine how terrible it would be to like be in an embassy at this point, like in Trump's presidency, and you're like trying to explain that nuance, and it's like, no, they should listen to us. Well, I also have to wonder too. It's like you know the equipment is backdoored, apparently riddled with backdoors, if you believe you know what the State Department says. So how concerned are we really that Huawei would be selling equipment riddled with backdoors to Iran? It would be like. I don't know, selling shoddy nuclear enrichment uter- materials or centrifuges or something like that to Iran. Hmm. That totally never happened. Oh no, central banks are contemplating uh, a world without cash. I've forgotten how to run the, the clicker thing. So I didn't read this one, I'll be honest. Uh, I saw this one when we were like putting up, I was like, I didn't see that. We've kind of covered a lot of the information here. There's not really a lot of new information in this if you are an avid viewer of the level one news this is basically talking about how um a lot of people may not actually have cash it's not talking about cryptocurrency specifically but also how cryptocurrency can you know move assets from from place to place a lot of banks will loan out more money than they actually have banking uh on on the fact that uh nobody is going to take their their money out all at once a lot of the financial systems are designed with that and so as long as they don't inject way too much money more than they have into the system at once it's fine so cryptocurrency trust and, them to do that though. yeah well like, and then you also have like credit and so like you throw credit into the mix and that's a whole other it's like i'm gonna take a bank loan out it's sort of tracked differently than i have a credit card and the credit card has given me you know money that i don't have that i'm paying a crazy interest rate on fit your jar yeah. put your money in it bury it in your head it makes me sad when the the banks are like we will give you an interest rate of like one and a half or two percent. It's like, but inflation is like 2.2 percent minimum. I can't outpace inflation with just saving money. What a, an incredible discouragement for saving money, unless you put it in risky things, which are designed to rob you. Yeah, they are designed to rob. You. <laughs> uh, there's a new FAA drone rule that is a giant middle finger to aviation hobbyists. It seems like a sensationalist headline. It's not. The FAA wants to put a radio transponder on literally everything. So if you stick something in the... I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if little kids flying kites would have to have a radio transponder the way this thing reads. Uh, by the time you're watching this, the comments are closed. They closed at 11.59 p.m. on Monday. Um, well, if you're on Patreon, you might you might have like an hour. but this, <laughs> To hit it and tell them no, but... This is kind of a dire situation. I mean, this is... What's the what's the reasoning for doing this by, for the people who are making the law? People who are flying hobbyist things are going to uh, fly it into commercial air travel and just be terrible people and cause a lot of problems. Can drones even get high enough to interfere with air traffic? Well, if you're around the airport, sure. I guess, yeah. Maybe. Isn't that already prohibited? Like, yeah. So... What's, what does this accomplish? Like, Not really anything, just control. Just more control. And it's like, on the one hand, I agree, people are stupid and are going to do terrible things. But on the other hand, really? And is that really going to happen enough to warrant having like a whole series of laws about it? Uh, speaking of stupid laws, Australia. Australia is moving forward with that mandatory age verification for pornography websites. Not to be confused with that time the UK tried it. It didn't work for the UK, but maybe it'll work for us. This this porn blocker thing also reminds me of the, the Encryption Act, like the... Uh, the earn it thing, it will. The earn it thing will be about as successful. There was, there was also like it mentioned like, oh, if it's on you know Twitter posts, we won't be able to block it. If it's on, <laughs> you know, this social media site, we won't block it. If it's on the it. internet, so, we won't be able to block yeah, it. Yeah, so it was like, what? What's the point of this? <laughs> uh, speaking of a boring dystopia, um, uh, this is blocked, but you really should go read this one. This one's uh, a new time. This is the Phoenix New Times. I'm not sure why this wasn't covered elsewhere. Maybe it will have been by the time this airs, because this, maybe this was a relatively new story. Dude was arrested and put in jail for seven days. And the reason is because he uh, was driving, uh, or he was uh, doing the bicycle exercise thing. And he happened to bicycle by a murder scene. And so the police did one of those Google... Oh, and like, it showed that he passed by. Yeah. And so they arrested him and they were like, we have 100% got you dead to rights at the murder scene. Do you know this person? Blah, blah. He was in jail for seven days. He's suing for $1.5 million. I hope he gets every penny. Do you think he will? I hope so. I kind of doubt it. But I yeah, hope I that he does. I kind of doubt it as well. But uh, yeah, this is like... And again, the whole... Was the body just in like the bush or something and he drove by? or like? No, it was inside a building. 
but the the location data is not accurate enough to really tell you that. But they were just like, "Hey Google, we want to know around the area." Yeah, yeah, who all was in this area? And the, the police apparently didn't understand that. But can you imagine if they don't understand something as simple as geolocation? If they get all of the data that they want access to in the Earn It Act, that they will not completely misunderstand that. And it's like I guarantee, if that guy was a poor person, he would still be in jail. Yeah. Oh, he's probably like one of those power cyclists who like gets up at like 6 a.m. to walk. It's like he can afford not to have a Peloton at home, which is like $60 a month, which is just like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Biking's expensive. That's an expensive hobby. <laughs> I say as a backpacker, which is also an expensive hobby, but. <laughs> we could say it's like computer nerds, which is also an also expensive an, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I've talked about that before where sometimes like I feel like there's a bit of a, bit of a barrier to entry into computing if you don't have a lot of a cash on hand. You can you can get a. I got my start w- with garbage. Like all yeah. of, all of my computers were computers that I literally got from the garbage for. Well, I think I, it's easier than it used to be, but yeah. like for a long time it was like you had the family computer and it was like don't mess it up because everyone <laughs> uses it. <laughs> don't literally don't do anything with it because it will end badly. Yeah, what did you download on here? What is this? It's an yeah. ad blocker, mom. No, 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 no. That's a virus. Get it rid of it. Yeah, we were so poor. We didn't have a family computer. It was just literally like. I think I like computers. I must construct one from failed toaster parts and yeah. used rubber bands. So, Speaking of people that have their infrastructure made of failed toaster parts and used rubber bands, this defense contractor, CPI, has been knocked off by a ransomware attack. So that's right. One of the major electronic suppliers of the U.S. government, which depends on things like security clearances, has been compromised by ransomware. Didn't they pay like half a million? They did. You Which think means about that, that they don't have backups. And it's like, man, I could own a really nice house for that. <laughs> According to the source, a domain admin, a user with the highest level of privileges on a network, clicked on a malicious link while they were logged in. Oh. Uh, come on. It was a really convincing link. There were hot singles in his area. <laughs> Oh, no. That's a defense contractor. You, you think that guy got fired? I think this this contractor is probably going to be awarded a larger contract to make sure they don't go out of business because they they really, really need them. Uh, They're also running XP, Windows XP, which stopped receiving security patches in 2014. <laughs> That's why you watch the level one part. news, right? It's like Ooh. you can at least look around at your your you know where you are and your computers where you are and just be like, well, at least it's not that bad. You know, my setup's not perfect, but <laughs> uh, that this also reminded me of, hey, what's going on with the uh, the CIA stuff? Because there was that trial, and then then this Chinese security firm says the CIA hacked Chinese targets for the past eleven years. Kihu 360 becomes second Chinese security vendor to blame the CIA for hacks against its civil aviation sector. And there is some credible evidence presented here, it seems like. This would be good to look at. And this is based, some of this is based on the Vault 7 leaks and some of the stuff that was dumped from the Vault 7 leaks. And some of that stuff is from the court case. So, in case you, you know, we've covered on past episodes that there's a court case where the, the CIA is prosecuting the guy that leaked to WikiLeaks. The tools, which may or may not have been from a compromised antivirus because the tools were on his civilian computer, so he may or may not have intentionally leaked them. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of nuance and details, and that's not entirely accurate. But there is a some developments in his case, and all the evidence has been presented and the jury is still deliberating. They may have returned a verdict by now, but empty wheel has a emptywheel.net has a nice write up on the uh, Joshua Schultz story that's the the person that has been charged with that so the jury right now is in agreement on two of the charges and they're, they're two i think the lesser charges from what it sounds like um this is also the case where one of the jurors was ejected because they were just like nope not guilty and it sounds like the defense has presented a, pro- a plausible defense and he may have been framed but the jury is also asking for lots of irrelevant questions and about how internal systems inside the cia work which is really kind of fascinating this is a pretty good read I the website design on this, you know. I was looking at it. I was like, man, it, it's aged fairly well. <laughs> like it, it's definitely dated, but it it works. So he, it's uh, uh, there was you know his an SSH key for somebody else was found in his home directory, and then that was our home dis, home directory, and that was used for deleting logs. And then there was something about a computer fraud and abuse charge, suggesting jurors are not 
treating the reversion as a hack, but might be treating Schultz as you know booting his colleague off the network as as one. So it's like okay, he didn't he, you know he didn't hack the system. He used the access that he had, and then the CIA hasn't. There's an employment dispute, and the CIA apparently has not done a good job of of making clear whether or not he was an employee or a contractor because he was apparently an employee and then he wasn't an employee and they're like, no, he should have not had any access to these systems. And then the defense presented is like, well, they did hire him to do some stuff while he was at a conference. So maybe he did still supposed to have access to those systems. And so it's just sort of a mess. And that's why you document everything. <laughs> yeah, document everything with 17 emails copied to like 17 people. And they're just like... And pretend that a judge is reading it. Oh, this again. <laughs> As per my last email. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> per my last email. It's like, listen here. Listen. Bleep. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of things going very badly in, in the security sector, we're, we're sort of... Transitioning. We're transitioning. I, see what we did there? We used that for transitions. The Intel CSME bug is worse than previously thought. Researchers say a full patch requires replacing hardware. Only the latest Intel 10th generation CPUs are not affected. So this is a bug that was previously disclosed. Intel's patch doesn't fully fix it. It may not be fully fixable. It is possible to take over the entire management engine on an Intel CPU. So that means like DRM and protecting the system firmware and all that stuff. None of that is going to work. Not a good year. Not a good couple no. years for Intel. No, and the intelligence services of several countries are probably already onto this and are probably already aware of this, and this is probably not a big deal. So, we have the, some other bad news for Intel later. Uh, <laughs> in the news. It was uh, it was AMD. Oh, I dropped a story here. Well, there was supposed to be a story between this story and the next story. I've messed that up. On Friday, um, researchers, security researchers, dropped about a similar. Uh, problem with uh, AMD. Oh not, no! Not on the platform security processor side, but on speculative execution. But um, that's still a developing story. But AMD says that this vulnerability that they're using is not really a new vulnerability. It's just that the m mitigations, the software mitigations for speculative execution, were not in place in whatever testing they were doing. So this is still a developing story. The people at AMD had to work over the weekend because they dropped it late on a Friday. I think it's suspect that they dropped it late on a Friday, but the researchers that disclosed the AMD vulnerability um, did disclose it uh, last year. So this is a responsible disclosure. Um, so presumably there has been some back and forth between the security researchers and AMD over the last several months. So it's a little bit cloudy as to, to what extent AMD is really affected, but uh, it looks like it will be mitigatable in software, but this again is a developing story. We'll probably have more info on the AMD thing next week anyway, but it's related. It's a, another no modern mo microprocessor is really secure. It's just a matter of people looking for stuff. Teaching th sand to think was a mistake. <laughs> Please buy our mugs. <sighs> or Linode, either one. It's fine. Uh, speaking of bugs, hashtag sponsored. <laughs> speaking of bugs, Let's Encrypt discovers a CAA bug and must revoke customer certificates. I really like this stock photo. Yeah, with well, the little bugs crawling over the code. Yeah, spiders. That's great. There's, there's. <laughs> Are they really bugs then? That's arachnids. It's <laughs> exactly. It's different. Exactly. So what? Uh, Let's Encrypt provides free SSL certificates, which is great, and it's awesome, and everybody should be using it. But it's all automated. The SSL certificates only last ninety days. So they accidentally introduced a bug in their renewal thing. So let's let's say that we have uh, two websites like level one text and www.level one text, and we request a certificate from Let's Encrypt. Well, it turns out Let's Encrypt was checking level one text.com twice and then granting a certificate for www.level one text and level one text.com. Oops. Oh. Yeah. So they would only like if you had ten different subdomains, they would check the one domain 10 times and then <laughs> grant you an SSL certificate. That's so that's, they had to revoke, uh, they weren't sure how, how, like what sites were affected. So they had to revoke a bunch of certificates, like a million. And uh, you can just renew your certificate, but you might have to renew your certificate a little early. Whoops. <sighs> Speaking of whoops, rail station Wi-Fi provider exposed traveler data, 172 million people. But they're saying, wow. no, 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 we've got the logs, and we can see who all downloaded this. It was literally only the security researcher and nobody else. So the information didn't actually make it out, except for, like, maybe these 10,000 people, but not everybody. So it's probably fine. And I'm just going to tell you right now, next week or the week after, we're going to have a story. It wasn't fine, and a lot of other people downloaded it, too. Just, just letting you know. 
you got to secure your buckets. This is a great story. This is probably my favorite story for security. And I usually don't love security as a section. How a hacker's mom broke into prison and the warden's computer. This is a good story. It is a great... They should make this into a movie. He literally just... This guy, he was just like, Mom, I want you to go to the prison, pretend to be a health inspector, but actually go in and and just throw in these USB sticks everywhere you can. His mom actually did work in the health industry. So she became the CFO of his security consulting company. But um, previously she had worked in the uh, health industry and had like food service and had a lot of experience conducting these surprise health audits. So she played the part really well. Yeah, and like they said that like no one really checked her or asked her for like an ID or anything. Like, oh, it sounds like she knows what she's yeah, talking about. Yeah, so they about. just like they let her in the kitchen. She pretended to swab stuff, and then she's <laughs> like, "Well, I need to see the server room to make sure there's no mold and like humidity problems." And they're like, "Oh, okay," and like they just let her in there. And no one supervised <laughs> her. Like, yeah, they plugged in and established remote access, and then and then uh, she gave the warden a USB stick that was like, "Here's all our best practices and recommendations." Yeah, yeah. and she just blah blah blah. He's like, "Okay, cool." So the warden plugged it into his computer, and of course, and the security research. Researchers had full access to that. It was a yeah, it was a word document. He it did actually have information about like food service stuff, but it was also oh my gosh, compromised, insane. Well, that's it for today. What do we got for tomorrow? No one knows. I think it's um business, a lot of business, almost There's entirely a large business. Of business. It'll probably just be business because there was a lot of business. There weren't news. a whole lot of like AI stories. I remember. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why the AMD story wasn't in there. It's because it's not a government story. It's a business story. Or security story. Oh no, it was business. it was government and security. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're we're kind of lost. Ryan will be back next week, though. I will I will probably be gone for the news next week, so it'll be weird. We also had daylight savings, and I couldn't sleep last night, so there's not enough I, coffee in this building. We're we're all like a little out of it this week, but it's fine. We'll be back, and it's almost spring. So see you tomorrow. Bye.